On this week's show, we join Jeff Johnston as he visits Vail, Colorado, a fantastic RV destination both in the summer and in winter. As Jeff shows us, there's plenty to see, do, drink, and eat at this fun-filled location. Also, with so many RVers wanting to get off the grid now, having ample electric power is essential. Jeff shows us a great portable solar panel kit from GoPower that will help solve that power problem. Then, later in the show, Mark and Don Polk from RV Education 101 show us some great safe trailer towing tips. Rolling on TV is sponsored by Carefree of Colorado, celebrating over 45 years of RV awning innovation. Closed captioning, we're available is sponsored by Forest River. Begin the journey. If you enjoy wintertime sports, skiing, snowmobiling, snowshoeing, whatever, Colorado is hard to beat as a place to find all kinds of those activities. But there's another side of Colorado that's equally as much fun. We're in beautiful Vail, and this area abounds with all kinds of activities and fun things to do during this, the summertime off season. We're gonna show you around, give you kind of an idea of what you can do around Vail, Colorado and the surrounding area. So let's go take a look. Our visit coincided with the GoPro Mountain Games that drew more than 20,000 people to the area. Attendees can view a number of fun competitions in town, including tightrope walking and kayaking the river rapids. The city is a delight for walking and visiting a wide variety of restaurants and specialty shops. Sampling the local wares is just part of the fun. The GoPro games and city are dog friendly and include numerous watering stations plus a doggy wading pool. RVs were well represented among the products on display during the games. While we were walking around beautiful downtown Vail, look who we ran into. Our friends from Four Wheel Pop-Up Camper. In this case, the display was set up by Rocky Mountain Four Wheel of Denver. It's kind of nice to see the product here. You know. And they're off. Reaction time 0.293. Spree firing out of a cannon. The snow is gone, but you can ride up the Eagle Bond Gondola for some family fun at Adventure Ridge on top of Vail Mountain. No matter where you go in Colorado, the scenery is spectacular. From ground level, you're looking up at mountains or down into valleys. If you're not afraid of heights, another option is the Eagle Bond Gondola at Vail Mountain. The gondola goes from 8,200 to 8,300 feet roughly up to the top, which is 10,300 roughly feet. So it's quite an elevation gain, and what you're watching out the window, of course, spectacular. Highly recommended as a fun thing to do here in the Vale area. Breathtaking doesn't quite describe the panoramas that present themselves from the top of the mountain. The activities are manned by trained staff to keep things fun and safe for the young ones. From a mega-sized climbing gym to a kid-friendly zip line, there are fun activities for all ages. When you're ready to let someone else do the walking, there's the Vail Riding Stable, just a short drive from town. Parking is snug, so better to visit with just your tow vehicle or motorhome dinghy rig. 
As the saying goes, there's nothing better for the inside of a person than the outside of a horse. You guys had a good time. Is that all you have? Our trail rides are walking trail rides up in the mountains. We have beautiful aspen glades and pine trees all over. They're beautiful lookout points that look across the entire Vale Valley. Um, and you're on horseback for the entire ride. So you just get to enjoy the scenery with our beautiful gentle horses along the trail ride. And our guides are very knowledgeable, they're kind, they'll help you with steering, give you some nice instructions right before you head out, and they're leading the ride, so they're always there to help you with anything you may need along the way. Our first-rate wranglers are here to match you up with your perfect horse. They'll match your personality, experience, height. We look at everything when we're setting you up with a horse, and they're happy to help you onto the horse, get you all situated, make sure you feel comfortable, and make sure you're ready to steer up on the mountain as you go. We can accommodate up to groups of 12 people. So we have 12 horses that can go out at a time with two of our amazing guides. And so we'll take groups of 12, but we can also take single riders, doubles, any number that you do have. Our trail rides run from Memorial Day weekend all the way through August. And um, I would highly suggest calling for a reservation or going online to valestables.com. We have easy online booking, um, amazing pictures, but you're also welcome to just give us a call and we're happy to book your ride. Vale Stables also includes yoga sessions with a different twist. Baby goat yoga has attendees mingling with the barnyard critters. The human and goat interaction helps participants slow down and get a bit closer to one's natural side. This can be a terrific way to relax after a day on the road in your RV. Local Colorado campgrounds range from just the basics boondocking sites to full-scale luxury resorts. We stopped by Sugar Loafin Campground in Leadville for a look at one option where visitors can drop anchor when touring the area. Um, we're approximately 10,000 feet in elevation. Um, we're three miles west of the city of Leadville, Colorado, right in the heart of the Rocky Mountains. And we have a full service campground with uh, 50 amp and 30 amp full hookup sites, 30 amp water and electric sites, and tent sites. So we can take everything from a two-person backpacking tent to a 45-foot Class A motorhome. We'll have more about fun things to do in the Vale area right after these commercial messages. Stay tuned. Aquacam possums. So fast and easy to use, it could seem like a game. Someone once said, the camping doesn't really start until the RV awning comes out. Whoever said that really knew what they were talking about. Carefree of Colorado, celebrating 45 years of RV awning innovation. For more information, visit our website at carefreeofcolorado.com. Welcome back to Rolling On TV. Let's continue our look at some fun summer season activities for RVers in the Vail, Colorado region. Sugar Loafin Campground is a great example of a fun place to stay in the area. You know, really, as far as the nutshell of the campground, that's it. We have a small general store, um, and we sell just necessity items, typically, uh, some souvenirs, and we've been in business. This is our 51st season. Um, we have thousands of acres of wilderness area here as well, with many, many high lakes for fishing, um, many, many scenic vistas. Uh, we have the Top of the Rockies National Historic Scenic Byway, which is a national byway as well as a Colorado byway um, that, that basically Leadville sits in the center of. There's just lots of history, lots of outdoor activities, gold medal trout streams, four-wheeling, hiking, just pretty much anything you'd like to do that has anything to do with the outdoors you can do right here. From the calm of a campground to the activity of a railroad, Colorado has something for everyone. Riding the rails can take visitors to some remote, hard-to-access areas of the state. 
The Leadville, Colorado and Southern Railroad offers a comfortable and scenic ride through the hills with spectacular views. The parking lot can accommodate RVs of all sizes with convenient driving access. Yeah, so the Leadville, Colorado and Southern Railroad is um, a tourist train that operates uh, 14 miles along Leadville all the way up to the Climax Molybdenum Mine. We operate uh, starting Memorial Day weekend every year is when we open up. And this year, and usually every other year, we close um, all the way operating until early October. We do operate our original station here in Leadville at our depot. Inside the depot, we do have several different concessions as well as several different gifts, gifts and uh, little trinkets and such. Here in Leadville, we are considered one of the highest incorporated cities in America, sitting at an elevation of 10,200 feet. Along our line, we will make a stop going all the way up to 10,800 feet approximately. And it is along our journey that we see two of the highest peaks in Colorado. We like to call them 14ers. We will see Mount Elbert, which is the tallest mountain in Colorado, located in the Sawatch mountain range. And our train does travel into the San Isabel National Forest um, and in and along the Mosquito Mountain Range, in and around Prospect Mountain. We will see several different types of wildlife, ranging from elk, deer, moose, black bear, and even potentially mountain lions. We also see several uh, field mice, pika, um, and several different types of birds, ranging from even eagles, even down to hawks. Um, and then along our line, we will see several different uh, historical areas where miners did come through on their way up to Leadville, where there used to be either mining camps or even mining towns. We do make a stop on our train at our historic French Gulch water tower. And it is at this location where we do allow passengers to get off the train. And we do open up our engine and our caboose for touring, as well as seeing the grounds of the water tower and learning the history on some of our signs that we have posted there. There are worse ways to spend a beautiful afternoon enjoying some of Colorado's scenery and history. A train ride is good for your soul. On the way down the hill on I-70 toward Denver, a sign caught our eye, gold panning. Well, okay. went in Rome, as they say, so we took a side trip to see what was up. The Phoenix Gold Mine is one of many places a visitor can pan for gold in Colorado. Displays of authentic mining equipment provide a glimpse into how it's done by the serious mining operators. The Phoenix Mine offers tours of the gold mine tunnels, but Pam opted to go panning in the creek. A bit of how-to education gets a novice going with gold panning. Your dirt, your rock has a shake right after. Mm -hmm. You pick a spot in the creek and go to it. It takes some practice to wash out the bad stuff while you look for the good stuff. Theoretically, you swirl a little bit and the heavy stuff goes off first, leaving the very fine. Pam was pretty good at it. After a few washouts, you may go home with a bit of color, as the saying goes. From in-town action to horseback fun, scenic train rides and gold panning, there's a lot for RVers to do in the Vail, Colorado region. It's a terrific place to spend some time. For more information about Vail regional activities or anything you've seen on today's show, log on to our website at rollinontv.com. Forest River, we not only build great RVs, we build award-winning RVs. Check out our complete product line at forestriverinc.com. Forest River, begin the journey. At Norcol, we realize that some of your favorite RV destinations are off the grid. And Norcol refrigerators are uniquely designed with that RV experience in mind. We call it Freedom Unplugged. To learn more about our Norcol RV refrigerator line or to find a dealer near you, visit our website at norcol.com.
Some people like full hookup campgrounds and all the amenities. We, like a lot of campers, enjoy going dry camping, or as they say, boondocking, which means no hookups. The disadvantage there is sooner or later you run out of electricity. For example, if it's cool enough that you run your furnace all night, you know, you, you, your, your 12 volt battery power supply can be a little bit dodgy. Fortunately, there is a simple solar solution for that. Uh, Go Power is a company that offers a number of portable uh, so solar panel charging setups for your RV batteries. This one is a 120 watt kit. They have kits all the way up to 200 watts and they also offer uh, uh, permanent setups for the top of the vehicle. Well, we're going to show you what, how this 120 watt works, set it up alongside the trailer and show you what kind of an advantage you can have by using this type of a system. What this means is the solar panels charge your batteries all day long while you're out gallivanting around. You come home at night, back to the trailer or the RV of other kinds, and uh, you've got plenty of battery power for the night, and then it recharges the next day. The Go Power panels and connecting cables come in a sturdy carrying case for safe and convenient storage in your RV. You unfold the panels, and you find all the hookup hardware on the inside. The kit comes complete with a variety of ways to connect to your RV. You can plug in a set of clips, hook them right on the battery. There is the, again, the universal connector. And this is the small plug like you find on the side of an awful lot of RVs, say, prepped for solar. Another plug, same function, just slightly different plug design. And this wire has a couple of eyelets on the end so you can connect it directly to the battery without having to use clips. So you're pretty much set up no matter which way you want to go. Each side of the panel has these kind of leg kits that can stick out here. So we'll set these up. And approximately here. And we'll hold the whole rig over to the side of the trailer and figure out how we're going to hook these to the batteries. Now these clip leads are kind of short to reach from the back of the panel under the tongue of the trailer into the batteries. So what we're going to do, the company also provides a 30 foot extension cable, which is an option in case you also need to move the panel someplace out into the sun. We'll probably be using this. Turns out that our, our trailer was equipped with the solar charge port and one of the adapters in the kit just happens to fit. So we plug it in, and that's set. And the nice thing is, because this is portable, you put it in the sun, wherever you happen to need it at the moment, this fits just fine. Brought out the cord that we've already plugged into the coach. Plug it in back, and we are set to go. Now there's a simple setup procedure for the uh, charge controller it will go through here. The charge controller can be set up for sealed batteries, AGM or absorbed glass mat, or flooded. These are conventional flooded batteries, so we've set it up for flooded, and it's now showing that we have 4.8 amps of current flowing into the batteries. Uh, five amps now. Get my shade off the, uh, off, off the surface here. So we're going to set up, uh, we're going to connect our uh, voltmeter to the batteries and we'll show you what happens when we plug this in. Uh, approximately 12.65. Okay, go ahead and plug it in, Pam. All right, and once the voltage regulator gets kicked in, and we've got 12.712. We show 12.72 volts. It bumped up a little bit, 12.73, and 12.73 volts is what we're showing now. Go ahead and unplug it, Pam. Now, now that it's unplugged, we're back down to 12.67. So, we got a little something coming in. As the day wears on, you can re-aim the panels to maintain the optimum charging angle with the sun. So we've got power coming into our batteries, courtesy of the sun. 
The Go Power solar kits like this are available in a variety of sizes. They've all got the built-in uh, power voltage regulator, so it's as easy as it can be. In fact, uh, with all the plugs and connectors, this is almost a foolproof operation. If you like going dry camping and you're tired of running out of power and 12 volt electricity when you need it most, uh, check into this kind of a portable solar system. It may be the solution that lets you enjoy your time out on the campsite a little more relaxed, a little more fun. And for more information about the GoPower equipment, log on to our website at rollingontv.com. Wow, am I glad I used AquaCam. Maybe chili wasn't the best idea. AquaCam, the most powerful odor control available and the number one seller for over 50 years. Hi, I'm Mark Polk with RV Education 101 and I would like to welcome you to RV 101 Understanding Your RV. Today's topic is safe trailer towing tips. Towing a trailer safely requires the proper hitch components. Today we're going to discuss hitch receivers, types of hitches, hitch balls, and ball mounts. Let's get started. Every component in a towing system has a weight rating. Your towing system is based on the weakest link in the chain. Let's start with the hitch receiver. The hitch receiver receives the hitch head or ball mount. The hitch receiver is rated to handle a specific amount of weight and has nothing to do with the tow vehicle's tow rating. The rating for the hitch receiver must be greater than the amount of weight being towed. There are a few terms you need to be familiar with in this section. Weight carrying hitch. A weight carrying hitch means all of the weight of the trailer is supported by the hitch itself. Weight carrying hitches are used for lighter trailer applications. Too much weight directly on the hitch can affect the steering and handling of the tow vehicle. If you are towing a lighter trailer with a weight carrying hitch and experience problems with the steering and or sway, you may need a weight distributing hitch. With the loaded trailer hooked up to the tow vehicle, stand back and look at it. If the lowest point is where the trailer couples to the hitch, talk to your RV dealer about a weight distributing hitch. Hitch ball and ball mount. Towing your trailer safely involves more than just selecting the right class of hitch receiver for the job. The hitch ball and ball mount also have maximum weight ratings they are capable of handling. Hitch balls have three basic measurements, the ball diameter, the shank diameter, and the shank length. Ball diameter sizes come in 1 and 7 8 inch, 2 inch, and 2 and 5 16 inch. The ball size must be the right size for the coupler on the trailer you are towing and be rated to tow the trailer's gross vehicle weight rating. The hitch ball base and shank play a major role in the hitch ball's weight rating. The ball mount is the removable portion of the hitch that slides into the hitch receiver. For weight carrying hitches, it may be necessary to find a ball mount with a drop or rise to help level the trailer when it's hooked up to the tow vehicle. Ball mounts are also rated by the amount of weight they can safely tow. An adjustable ball mount is used for heavier trailer applications. Adjustable ball mounts allow the ball to be raised, lowered, or tilted to compensate for trailer tongue weight and to attain proper height adjustments. Adjustable ball mounts are normally used with weight distributing hitches. Always check the receiver, the hitch ball, and the ball mount to make sure that the weight you are towing does not exceed the hitch component's capacities. That's a quick primer on safe trailer towing and trailer hitch components. If you'd like to learn more about towing a trailer safely, take a minute to visit www.rvonlinetraining.com. Happy camping. We hope you enjoyed this week's show, and for more information on anything you saw on the show, along with additional videos, stories, and RV news, visit our website at rollingontv.com. You can also find us on Facebook, YouTube, and Vimeo. As usual, this has been another fun production.